Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible and turn it to the book of Isaiah. We're going to be looking at chapter 36, starting in verse 1. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. A little bit of background. The Israel capital was Samaria, and the capital of Judah was Jerusalem. They had a sort of kind of a civil war, and they split. And the king of Assyria earlier had gone in and taken northern Israel into captivity. And the 36th chapter of Isaiah covers where he took also part of Judah. So he had taken all of Israel, and now he's encroaching into the area of Judah. And that's what we are reading about here. So let's go to verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 14th year of King Hezekiah that Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the defensive cities of Judah and took them. Now, a lot of people don't make the connection. But, okay, Judah went into captivity with Babylon, or, or specifically Jerusalem, the capital city, and probably some outlying areas, for 70 years. And then at the end of the 70 years, uh, they returned to Jerusalem under uh, Darius and Cyrus, uh, kings of Persia, after they had conquered Babylon, because Judah had spent 70 years in uh, captivity in Babylon. And that's recorded in, oh, Jeremiah, that's recorded in the book of Daniel. So, but the thing is, uh, a part of Judah went into captivity prior to that with the Assyrian Empire along with Israel. So Israel and part of Judah went into went All right, so the Assyrians took all of Israel into captivity and removed them from their land and resettled them in a different area. And then they took some people from another area and moved them into the area of Israel. But they didn't take everybody. So Samaria was a mix of Israelites and non-Israelites, which is going to cause some contention between Israel and Judah in the New Testament during the times of Christ. Henceforth, the Samaritan woman. However, I did a study on the Samaritan woman, proving that she was indeed an Israelite, because she told Jesus, uh, our father Jacob, and Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So she was an Israelite. But the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans, because Israel had been divorced. Read Jeremiah 3 and verse 8. But my point is, part of Judah was taken into captivity along with Israel, and they were moved from where they had lived to a different area. That's sort of like you conquer the United States, and you take the people from New York, and you move them to Georgia, and you take the people from Georgia, and you move them to New York. Well, this negates their home field advantage, so to speak. I mean, if you know the area, you can use that to your advantage for guerrilla tactics, you know, fighting against your enemy. But when they move you to an entirely new area, you can't do that. So, because you don't know the area. So it would keep the Assyrians from having a lot of problems. But the point is, Part of Judah was taken into captivity with Israel. And historians can prove that people in the Assyrian Empire ended up 
going to Europe through the Caucasus Mountains. That's where they get the term Caucasian. It comes from their migrations through the Caucasus Mountains. And if you ask me, not that I'm an authority, but uh, I personally believe that Judah was at least a good part of the Germanic people. Because let's face it, people, if you look up all the royalty in Europe that were of German extraction, you'd be shocked. I mean, you're talking kings of Portugal, Spain, uh, you know, of course, Germany, Austria, Prussia, the King of England. Their family was from Germany. King George, the one we fought against in the Revolutionary War, um, during World War I, the King of England, the Kaiser of Germany, and the Tsar of Russia were all cousins. I mean, the Tsar of Russia was German. Uh, the, I think Sweden, I think they were Germans. And uh, it's just amazing, all the different Germans that were kings during World War I, approximately 25% of America was of German uh, extraction according to an old history book that I had. So, Germany, I mean, um, Judah was to be the king tribe, and Judah was considered first in war. Do you know that it took the entire world to defeat Germany in a war? It took the entire world, almost, to defeat the Germans. First in war. They were the tribe of the kings. And what else did they give us? The printing press. What was the first book they printed on the printing press? It wasn't the Babylonian Talmud. No, it was the Bible. You know, and everybody will say, ah, well, Germany's the Assyrians. No, I think they were the children of Judah, probably mixed in with other tribes, who were in Assyria that ended up in Europe. But, hey, what am I? I'm just some guy that reads too much. That's it. You know, I don't watch much television. Matter of fact, when I do watch television, it's only to see where the uh, devil's children are herding the sheep so that I could uh, go the opposite direction. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I don't mean to laugh because it's really not funny, but uh, yeah, what can I tell you? Uh, yep, find out where the where the sheep are being herded and go the opposite direction because you know it's to the slaughterhouse. And uh, Lord's got other things for me to do, I believe, than heading to the slaughterhouse. So, all right, with that in mind, let's read Isaiah chapter 36. Uh, now, when the Assyrians tried to take Jerusalem, they failed. I think an angel, I think we covered it, it I covered it in a previous study where the king of Assyria had a large army, like 185,000 strong army, and an angel of the Lord struck them dead. So, all right, let's go to Isaiah 36 and verse 1. Wow, nine minutes and I haven't even started yet, but at least you've got the background. Because let me tell you what, the Bible is, is like, a, it's like a piece of cloth. You've got all these different fibers going in all different directions, and they're all connected to each other when you go back for, far enough. And... Uh, that's why a lot of my Bible studies end up being as long as they are, because it's hard to separate one subject from another, you know? So, all right, verse 1, Isaiah 36, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 14th year of King Hezekiah that Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the defensive cities of Judah and took them. And the king of Assyria sent Rabshakeh, Rabshakeh, 
from Lachish to Jerusalem unto King Hezekiah with a great army, and he stood by the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. Then came forth unto him Eliakim, Hilkiah, uh, Hilkiah's son, which was over the house, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah, Asaph's son, the recorder. And Rabshakeh said unto them, Say ye now to Hezekiah, Thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? I say, sayest thou, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for war. Now on whom dost thou trust, that thou rebellest against me? See, Israel was paying tribute to the king of Assyria, and then Hezekiah quit. So now the king of Assyria is kind of mad, and he's got his army here. So, so he's like, all right, you guys think you can stop me? What confidence is that? So, verse 6. Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt, whereon if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all that trust in him. Now remember, Egypt was a major power back in the early days because of the Nile River. Uh, they had, you know, when you got water, you got crops. And when you got crops, well, you can have a large population. So, verse 7. Now, this is the king of Assyria's messenger speaking to the servants of the king of Judah. But if thou say to me, we trust in the Lord, our God, is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah hath taken away and said to Judah and to Jerusalem, ye shall worship before this altar? So, if memory serves me correctly, Hezekiah took away the uh, places of satanic worship. And this guy confronting them doesn't seem to understand that. So, the King Hezekiah wanted everybody to go to Jerusalem to worship the Lord the proper way. Verse 8. Now therefore give pledges, I pray thee, to my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give thee two thousand horses, if thou be able on thy part to set riders upon them. How then wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants, and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? And am I now come up without the Lord against this land to destroy it? And am I now come up without the Lord against this land to destroy it? The Lord said unto me, Go up against this land and destroy it. So he's basically saying, God told us to do this. But I don't think it was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Israel. No. All right, verse 11. Then said Eliakim and Shebna and Joah unto Rabshakeh, Shaka, Speak, I pray thee, unto thy servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it, and speak not to us in the Jews' language in the ears of the people that are on the wall. In other words, uh, you know, please don't speak to us in Hebrew. We, we don't want everybody else to understand what you're saying. Speak unto us in your own language, because we understand, and we'll, we'll talk to you in, you know, the Syrian language. Verse 12, But Rab Shakas said, Hath my master sent me to thy master, and to thee to speak these words? Hath, hath he not sent me to the men that sit upon the wall? that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? Boy, that's some pretty strong words, huh? See, that's what happens in a siege. 
you can't go outside and get your crops anymore. And after a while, what are you going to eat? What are you going to drink? Then Reb Shaka stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and said, Hear ye the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us. This city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Boy, that's some pretty tall words right there, big buddy boy. I'd be real careful about challenging the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. I'd be real careful there. Verse 16. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus saith the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me by a present, and come out to me, and eat ye every one of his vine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one of the waters of his own cistern, until I come, and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards. See, they were going to take them away from Jerusalem and put them somewhere else. See, when they were in war, you really don't want to kill. You didn't want to kill your people, I mean, your, your workers, because, you know, agriculture back in them days was a very labor-intensive endeavor. And, you know, killing all your workers just, well, how would the mob say it? Bad for business. Bad for business. So, verse 18. Beware lest Hezekiah persuade you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Listen to this. Hath any of the gods, gods, plural, hath any of the gods of the nations delivered his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arphad? Where are the gods of Sep Sephravim, and have, and have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Now remember, Samaria was the capital of northern Israel. And he even says, have, have, have their gods delivered Samaria out of my hand? Yeah, I, I took your cousins or your brothers you know, who are they among all the gods of these lands that have delivered their land out of my hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? But they held their peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was, saying, Answer him not. Then came Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, that was over the household, and Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, to Hezekiah with their clothes rent and told him the words of Rab Shaka. So, here it is. The uh, Assyrians are the messenger of the king of Assyria is boasting big time. Oh yeah, we're going to be able to take Jerusalem. And your God is not going to be able to stop us. They might be surprised. All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.